the way, I'm Dave Meyer. Feel free to stop by, say hi anytime. Uh, questions for the media. We're in the third row there. Just raise your hand. I've got microphones on both sides. Uh, third and the fourth row, I guess. Um, just raise your hand. We'll make sure you get a microphone so that we can pick it up on the stream. Um, and if anybody needs some interviews at the end, we can try to do some of that with some players and uh, coach as well. So with that, David, it's all you. All right. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the time and appreciate everybody coming out today to spend some time with us. It's good to see everybody again in, in Goggin. Um, real quick off the top, I want to say a couple quick thank yous to some folks that were very helpful in this process of navigating this space of the search. And I want to thank the team first and foremost. I know they're here, a lot of them, those that didn't have class today or had classes canceled, whatever the case may be. Um, it's good to see you guys here and thanks for your support. And um, I should mention that the team was offered the chance to come visit with Brad or I and, and share thoughts about what we should be looking for, things to think about. And multiple student athletes did take, take us up on that. And that was helpful to hear from them about things that were on their mind, things that uh, they wanted to see in the program and, and potential candidates. And, and one player, I won't name names, but actually mentioned Coach Noreen in the conversation. So that was kind of interesting too, the way it turned out. Um, but I thank all of them for their time and their energy. Um, I want to thank Brad Ockel. Brad um, jumped in on my senior staff to come back to Miami just under a year ago, and he's played a pivotal role in all of our fundraising efforts. He also took on the sport administration for hockey, and he's been indoctrinated quickly into the process of what that means. And Brad was very helpful side by side with me on the search process. And I do want to say a thank you to Brad for all your work. Thank you countless uh, Zoom interviews and, and different discussions that we had. So I want to thank him. We also included Alex Reed and Chauncey Winbush and Coach Katie in the search process. And I want to say a thank you to those three for their help in, in interviewing candidates and, and looking through, talking through what we were doing. Um, there were countless conversations. Simply put, this was the best job that was open out in college hockey that had been said to me by numerous people. And it was true by the interest. The interest was very strong. A lot of different people reaching out on behalf of others or directly to us. And so that was encouraging. You know, it's always tough when you have a transition, you kind of get through the hard part and then you start to turn to the, the good part and you start to feel the energy pick up. And there was a lot of positive energy with people interested in the position and wanting to talk about it, which was great for us. It kept Brad and I very busy. Um, I do want to thank everyone out in college hockey and even pro hockey or <clears throat> anywhere USHL hockey that reached out uh, to, to share opinions and thoughts. And certainly along those lines, a huge thank you to all of the alumni who reached out. This was a, a piv pivotal moment for me, I think, in this program's history in the sense that everybody, everybody that I heard from, former players, NHL guys, just regular alums who played hockey here back for Coach Katie in the day, everybody wants this program to be successful. It doesn't matter anything else. The, most important thing they talked about was what can I do to help support the program and get it back where it needs to be. And that was the most encouraging thing for Brad and I to hear. One, we have all their contact information now directly, which is really good. But second, it was just um, a uniting thing that they want this program to get back to where it's supposed to be, which is to be competing for NCAA championships and, and tournaments and competitive within the NCHC. So that was really encouraging for us. And we certainly have a plan to attack that quickly when I sat back and looked at the college landscape, you know, we're already dealing with it in football and basketball in terms of the portal, transfer portal, kids being able to come and go much quicker, more often, um, name, image, and likeness, Alston money, different things that are out there and about. Um, we've been dealing with it in those sports. It's starting to get into the hockey side too. It's, it's in the hockey side too, right? These things are happening. And that's why in the press release we put out, I made I referenced the Wayne Gretzky quote about skating to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. And I, that's really how I looked at this. This was a time that I felt we needed to hire somebody that could manage a roster, really be a CEO of a program is really what it comes down to. You're in charge of everything that happens. There's a lot of different external forces pulling at you, hitting you. It's someone that's frankly been a president and GM slash and head coach of a team. That's really what it is. It's managing your roster every single year. It isn't the olden days where you, you get a student athlete to come in and they're pretty much with you for four years. You can count on it. We needed someone that understood the fluidity of all that and how they could manage those situations. 
So what I think we found is somebody with contagious energy. You know, it's someone that constantly is willing to engage in conversations, really dig deep into somebody about why they, they want to be a hockey player and, and be an elite hockey player and how to help develop them as a person. So those were things that were really important, that energy, positive approach, somebody that knows what high-end talent looks like. That was critically important. Obviously, that's where I want to take this program, and it's going to take getting that kind of talent in the door to make sure that we can achieve what we want. Next is developing those players, right? Um, making them better hockey players, both on and off the ice. That's important here at Miami. And someone that has experience doing that was another thing we were looking for. And really what that's going to do is it's going to bring buy-in with it. It's going to create a culture. And that culture is going to ultimately lead to winning if it's done right. And that's really what I wanted to focus. And so someone that could check those boxes, I felt like was a monumental task to check all those boxes, but that was what we sought out to find. And I felt really good about, about what we were able to do and, and come up with with Coach Noreen. So with that being said, I'm just gonna say that it is important for us. This, this job is, this program is very important to me. Um, I've, I wanna thank the Blue Line Club and all the people who've been season ticket holders throughout and supported this program. And it just hasn't been where it needs to be. And that ends today. This program is going to be a competitive program in the NCHC, and we're going to compete for NCAA tournament bids. That's the expectation, and that's where we're going. No ifs, ands, or buts. So it's exciting for me to feel that energy and feel that passion. I'm not trying to put pressure on the new coach, right? But it's all good. Um, he came in a whirlwind, by the way. I mean, he came in Sunday. And uh, we were able to get him over to the baseball game. We were playing Ball State, and he got to see the end of that. And then he had to deal with the eclipse here in Oxford and all the people running around. Uh, he was staying uptown last night, so I'm not even sure what kind of stuff he saw or got involved with. But it's, it was a lot of stuff going on in Oxford, so he's kind of got the full gambit of it all. But, you know, the future's upon us now. And it's up to everybody here to help support the program and, and support Coach Noreen as he goes through the process. Obviously, we're going to honor his wishes to finish with, with what he's doing with Tri-City. Uh, they're gonna, they've qualified for the playoffs, and so there's going to be some future games that he has to be back in Nebraska for. Um, but he's going to be able to manage all of that. He assured me he wanted to do it that way, and he can handle it all, and, and we're going to work with him to do just that. So with that, I'm going to bring up Coach Noreen and introduce him to the public here and welcome him to Oxford. this for you and I do think I was the only person in Oxford that actually probably missed the eclipse yesterday to the dismay of most of the hotel staff that I told that to um, first off I'd like to to thank David and Brad and coach Katie and president Crawford for this opportunity when when I got when I walked into this opportunity and in, into the first really conversation via zoom um, it, it's been pretty clear to me the last few years that if, if I was going to move somewhere, the number one thing for me was to make sure that I was morally and philosophically aligned with the people that I was going to go work with. And, and in this case with the university as well. And I think really from our first conversation, um, we were just speaking the same language and I don't speak the same language as a lot of people. Um, I'm pretty intense at times and, and, and have pretty high standards. So it, it was really just exciting for me to hear what their vision was for the program um, and obviously sitting down with Coach Katie and he, getting to know a little bit about the history and kind of the direction he saw it going in the future. Um, so extremely appreciative to, to, appreciative to them about everything throughout this process. Um, also, I'm sure the hockey players here in attendance know, and, and David as a hockey dad know, knows this, that in order to make it this far in hockey, and whether that's as a player or a coach, like it, it, it takes an army. It's not as simple as just getting a stick and a puck and going up to the park and playing. It takes time. It takes weekends oftentimes. It takes equipment. Um, it takes long drives back and forth. It, it takes a total sacrifice from people in your life to be able to get an opportunity like this. So I'm extremely appreciative and thankful for my parents, the, my family, the support they've given me, and also the coaches I've had and the players I've been able to, to play with and, and the players that I've been able to coach. And I, I think as a coach – you're constantly taking from people that you've been around, from coaches you've been around, from teachers you've been around, from leaders you've been around, from maybe some family members that you like the way they did, they did things leadership-wise. You know, I've 
hope that my players that have learned as much from me as I have from them over the years. Um, and, and I'm extremely appreciative to them because you don't get an opportunity like this without those type of people in the hockey community. Um, to the alumni, I, I was saying this to some of the supporters a little bit ago, the, the support and the outreach from the alumni group here has honestly been the most impressive thing I've ever experienced in hockey. I mean, my phone has not stopped with calls, emails, texts, and not just people that care and, and, and people that love this place, but, but people that want to help. And how can I help? And what can we do? And please don't hesitate to pick up the phone. This is guys that had NHL games that night or the previous night. Um, this is people that have been long gone from here. Um, you know, it, it's been unbelievable. And, and I'm a, extremely appreciative to them because as much as I know this place means to them, their outreach to me and welcoming me here has meant an unbelievable amount to me. Um, this is a special place. It's something I've felt, and I've told a lot of people this, walking down through the hallways of that locker room and seeing the pictures and feeling just the aura of what Miami hockey is. It, it's special, and it doesn't become special overnight. Obviously, there's a lot of people, former coaches, former players, supporters of the program that have made this into what it is. And you could feel that, and I could promise you I've been in a lot of hockey arenas over the years, college, NHL, youth, that don't feel like this. So it's something that, that everyone involved should be extremely proud of, and it's something that I don't take lightly. Not at all. Um, I spoke to the players a few days ago. Um, it was nice to meet them all in person, but I spoke to them via Zoom. And I assured them that, that myself and the staff, our number one objective will be to support them. Our number one objective will be to develop them. Our job, and what I see a staff's job as, is to use everything within your power to develop your players as people, as leaders, and as hockey players. That's our job. And to make it where they have a chance to play this game for a long time, if that's what their ultimate development leads to. But if not, they're able to be tremendous leaders of a family. Okay? They're going to be highly employable adults and people that – that see, you know, CEOs and business leaders want within their companies. That's our goal. And that will be our goal every day. If we lose, that'll be our goal the next day. If we win, that'll be our goal the next day. And I told them that within that, it's ultimately my job and our job to set a standard. And my standard is extremely high. And it's not for everybody. But we will live that standard. We will hold them accountable to that standard. It will be uncomfortable to get to that standard. But I tell you what, there will be nobody in the world that they will ever meet or ever be around that will support them and have their back in reaching that standard than I am and that my staff is. And that everybody that, that steps foot onto our side of the office will do. We'll have their back. We'll help them. We'll be there for them in everything from hockey to school in life, things outside of hockey. Um, I look forward to that. It's uncomfortable at times. It's hard at times. And what I told them was, and it's something that I truly believe in. If you want to be a lead at something, if you really want to be a lead at something, you cannot be normal. You cannot do the same things as the other guys around you, as your peers or as your opponents. You've got to be different, okay? And obviously that, that's extremely hard, but the hard is the fun. The hard is what makes you who you are. That's what builds grit. That's what makes you into the person that you are, okay? And, and we're going to build that here, all right? And that has nothing to do with what the result is. We go on a win streak, has nothing to do with what we do the next day. We lose a game, has nothing to do with what we do the next day. And obviously that's going to start with me and my approach. But I gave these guys my word, and you'll hear from me, that that will not change. No matter what the results are, what our goal will be from day to day will not change. It will be consistent. It will be positive. It will be energetic, but it will be honest. We're going to face the facts. We need to get better. Okay? We need to get better today, just like we need to get better tomorrow, just like we need to get better next week. That's not going to change. If we want to do what I know the guys in that room want to do, and I know the people sitting in this room want to see the program do. Okay? And I feel like we have the facilities, the campus, the support to do that. Ultimately, we need the discipline to stick to it. We need the discipline to stick to it when maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe you're overloaded with schoolwork. Maybe you don't feel great, or you're sick, or you're tired or there's personal issues going on. The discipline to still be at an elite level every single day. That to me is what a team is. That's what a real team is. And 
I was down there this morning, bright and early, and I was reading over the words of the brotherhood. And I know that that's something that I was never a part of. And it's something that I want myself and the guys sitting in that room to earn the right to use. Because every single word in there embodies exactly what myself, the staff, and these players will embody. So like I said, I hope to embody that. I hope to get the right to use that because I truly believe in, in what it means. And the ultimate goal here is, is to make Miami University and Miami hockey not just a place, but the place. If you want to reach your academic goals, you want to reach your personal goals as a leader, and you want to reach your goals as a hockey player, the place where you have to go play collegiate hockey. And a place that's going to be in your heart, just like it is all those alumni and everyone that reached out, okay, because of what it meant to them moving forward. I look forward to it. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to meet everyone and be a part of it. Um, the games are going to be great, but today is what matters. And when tomorrow, tomorrow is what matters. And we're going to keep working at it bit by bit to make not just you guys, but the alumni and everybody that's a part of this program proud. Thank you. I'm good. Yeah, let's go. Coach Drew Davis from the Miami Sports Network. Um, what's the experience like and what are the challenges of coming into the dressing room and, and getting here to, to meet the returning players? Yeah, it, it, it's a challenge. I mean, listen, the number one thing, and, and I've come into new organizations, new teams multiple times. And to me, the first thing you always need to do is, is you need to get the right people in the right seats. And that's both on my side in the staff room and that's within that locker room. That's the first thing. Before you can come up with a plan of how you're going to play or what that's going to look like or what a lineup might look like, you need to get the right people in the right seats. So for me right now, it's meeting people, it's introducing myself, seeing what they're all about, you know, seeing what I'm all about because certain people aren't going to be for me, but I, I might not be for a lot of people. And, and that's okay. That's okay. But I, the one thing I can tell you is there's going to be honest discussion. It's going to be very open. It's going to be extremely clear what our standard is and – we're going to get people here that we feel can meet that standard, and we're going to support the heck out of them until they do. Hey, Coach. Greg Waddell, Miami Sports Network. Um, the transition for you now going from one level, uh, USHL to college hockey, what's that going to be like, and what do you kind of foresee being different from where you're at right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a continuation of a lot of what I've done in the past. Um, every single player that I've coached for the last seven years that was eligible because we did have some guys that were already under pro contract. Every single player moved on to Division One college hockey. We've had not had one guy that did not get a Division One college opportunity. So it's something that I've worked with day in and day out. Guys that are going to NCHC schools, guys that are going to you know uh, Ivy League schools, things like that. So again, it's it's the world that I've lived in, um, and I'm a true believer that leadership is leadership. People that are leaders are leaders. Whether that's a CEO, whether that's you're a uh, a mom or a, or a dad that's got three young kids at home or you're running a fortune 500 company you're a teacher uh, in elementary school or you're coaching a hockey team it, it's leadership and, and leadership has got to start with trust so for me i need to build trust number one with this group of players with the people around me so that they know my words are sincere that's number one and and, and vice versa they need to build trust in me and in us that they want to be here and they want to do the things and live up to the standard that, that we've set for. Hey, hey Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, John Lachman, View from the Glass. Um, so can you talk about, you got to fill out the roster here in the next few months. What's what's the process like? we got the portal, you've got an existing class, which actually looks pretty good on paper versus guys that you want to bring in. How, can you talk about that whole process and how you're going to... Yeah, and, and like I said, the number one thing is getting the right people in the right seats. So that's, that's evaluating the current roster. The guys, the guys that are here, um, that's evaluating some of the fifth-year guys that potentially could come back and see maybe where those guys fit ideally in a roster. And, and again, it's not, to me, it's like in a dream scenario roster, in an NCHC winning roster. Where do guys fit? But also, where do they fit culturally? Do they fit what we're looking to do and what we're looking to build here? Then it's incoming recruits. Where do they fit? Are they a good fit with us culturally? Are they a good fit with us on the ice? You know, who maybe might need more time versus who's ready to come in. Um, the transfer portal is a tool. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. 
sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Sometimes there's a reason a guy's going on to their third school or fourth school. And, and I think there's something to be said for the guys that stick it out in a place. But I also think it, it, it's good for certain guys. And, hey, maybe there was a coaching change. Maybe they didn't live up to their end of the bargain. Maybe just a change of scenery is going to be healthy for someone. So I think it's, it, it's both a tool to supplement your roster of where maybe there's some holes throughout it, um, and maybe it's a chance to upgrade your roster. But that, that, this is going to be an ever-flowing thing. And I, I could tell you this, it's, I've used the analogy the last couple of days to some people. It's like, it's been nonstop on the phone. It's been like in the movies where the, the stock market's crashing and you run out of time because the bell rings. That's what the days have been like since David and I came to an agreement on, on Sunday night. It's been nonstop. Um, the good thing is people want to see Miami get back to where it should be. People believe in this place. It's on me to sell a little bit of a dream right now that it, and tell them, it is going to get there. Like it is, there will be an unwavering belief from myself and the people sitting in that room. Like unwavering, it is going to get there, no doubt. But we also have to face facts. Like we need to get better. We need to get better in, in my. I need to be better, but also like we need to be better on the ice. And sometimes that's maybe a new voice. Sometimes that's maybe a, a different skill set. And, and that's okay. Those those are the honest conversations, the honest evaluations we need to make. But you know that's that process is is multifaceted now with things like the portal and, and junior hockey season still going on and and guys that are here that are that are you know figuring out what role they might fill. Hey, coach uh, Jeffrey Middleton from the Miami Student. Um, I was just wondering, how do you view yourself as a head coach in terms of like stylistically? Like, how do you like your teams to play? Yeah, I mean, to me, the goal is to have an identity. The goal is for you to walk in on a Friday, Saturday night, or a Tuesday afternoon practice or someone who played in the NHL for 20 years, or the opposing team, or someone who's seeing their first hockey game, and to all say the same thing about the team on the ice. And to me, the identity of teams that I've had in the past, and what I would love to build here, is teams that play the game fast, play the game hard, and are great teammates. And I think it's not as simple as just skating fast, but playing fast, being connected, being on the same page with each other, being predictable to each other, while unpredictable to your opponent. Being on the same page, hard. And that doesn't just mean running guys over into the boards because we want to do that too, but, but hard to play against. On the same page, sacrificing their body, physical. When teams come in here, they should dread coming in this place on a Friday and Saturday night. They should dread when the bus pulls up and this team's about to play them at their arena. That's hard. And then the ultimate thing and the number one thing to me is guys that are great teammates. And I said this to the guys. It's not good teammates, it's great teammates. Guys that truly care about the success of their teammates and the other guys on the ice as much as they do about their own. Guys who are willing to get down and lay in front of a shot that they know is going to hurt, okay? Because blocking a hockey puck hurts a lot because they know that the guy next to them in the room is going to do that. And to me, every single situation you come into as a hockey player, you could look at it of one of two things. I'm either being a great teammate or I'm not. That's in your academics. That's in how you act on campus. That's in how you interact with the rest of the guys in the room. Every single thing, they should be able to look at that and evaluate, and it should always be on that right side to me. Coach, Chris Vogt over here, Journal News. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, can you hone in on like a philosophy or your uh, motto that you're going to instill on your team and in your players? Discipline. Again, w w what I said before, like I – I want to make it clear to these guys that it's really easy for someone to come in and rah, rah, and get them to have like a great workout or run through the gates and ready to go on opening night. Every team does that. Every staff, every player, every locker room feels that way right now. They all feel great about what they have. They're all excited for what's to come. To me, like motivation, that, that shouldn't need to motivate at this level. If you're an elite at something, you should be self-motivated. To me, the key is the discipline to keep doing it, to keep doing what you're supposed to do no matter what you feel like, no matter what you maybe feel like you've been treated like, no matter what maybe the result is, but the discipline to just keep showing up and doing it right. And again, I'm full. that starts with me. That starts with my approach because I'm going to be very clear to these guys on what they can expect from me, and that's going to be – they're going to know it. But I need to have the discipline as well to make sure that the things I'm asking them to do – I do myself. And that's just going to be a huge part of what we do. And like I said, I think if you, if you stick to that, man, you're going to be successful in life. 
And that's what we want. We want to create successful men, guys that people want a part of their organizations, a part of their family, a part of anything they're going to do because they're going to make the people around them better. Uh, Coach, just from being in juniors for a while and then pro before that, just viewing this program from a distance for a little bit before you knew the job, you know, as a, a potential opportunity, what were kind of your impressions about this program? Yeah, I, I'll go two part with that. So number one, and, and a lot of people that know me really well in the coaching profession, they would tell you that like, they all reached out and said, hey, I know that was always your dream job. And I get, I never played here. I never coached here. Um, but I got my start coaching um, under a guy named Will Nickel. Will Nickel's now the director of player development for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. He was on Rico's first ever staff here when Rico took over as, as a young head coach in, in trying to build this program into what it, what it became. When I went on to Will's staff, we did a, a similar thing with our alma mater, Stevens Point. It was at its lowest point in 20 years, and a lot of what we did and we took came from what him and Rico did here. So when I got a chance a few years later to go be a head coach, a lot of what I did came from what Will learned at Miami and that Island learned at Stevens Point and I brought to, you know, with me and, and obviously it's ever evolving, but this is a place that's always been special to me. You know, when I, when I was coaching in Youngstown, we sent numerous players here, guys that were tremendous players in the ice, guys that were captains, guys that were, you know, and I would always remember asking those guys like, why, you know, you visited here, 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 and here, why Miami? Like it was the best. I just felt right. And I can remember being here and people sleeping in tents outside lined up to get tickets when I, when I came to watch. And it just always felt like a place that was special. Um, so again, here because of that, but also here because to me it's, it's and Coach Katie and I had this talk, this place is the perfect blend in the college hockey world. So there's some great academic universities, great academic universities, but maybe the hockey is just okay. And then there's some hockey powerhouses, but maybe the academic piece is just okay. This to me is, is the perfect blend of both worlds. You want to get a great education? Miami University. You want to develop to become a professional hockey player? Miami University. You know, to me, I think we check all the boxes. Um, obviously, a beautiful campus and a rink like this doesn't hurt either. But, you know, the other part of it is like, this is kind of what I do. Like, I've, come, I've been fortunate, and I think it's fortunate because what I love, like, I'm addicted to culture and to leadership and to building and to growing. And I feel very fortunate that I was able to come into a team that had missed the playoffs. I came into another team that just came off a last place finish. I came into a college, collegiate program in my first coaching job that was coming off his worst finish in 20 years. The build is the fun. Like you ask anybody that's been part of like a rebuild, like a rebuilding process or building process. It's never like, oh, that time where we lifted the trophy or the championship game. It's never that. It's the build. It's the grind in between. It's the battles on the recruiting trail that maybe you didn't get or you did get. It's the tough times with the team. You know, it's, it's, it's coming back maybe after a Friday night loss and a vengeance on Saturday. Those, those are the things you remember. The ride is what you remember. And, and to me, like, this is just the perfect time at the perfect place. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Jack Schmelzinger from the Oxford Observer. Congratulations. Just wondering, uh, do you have any short or long-term goals for recruiting, and do you expect to be able to use your ties in the USHL to bring like some really premier players to Oxford? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I'm fortunate in that what I've been doing, again, not just coaching, but running a draft and recruiting young players and identifying young potential players um, that are eventually going to matriculate from the USHL and junior leagues to NCAA Division One college hockey. So it's I'm familiar with the player pool. I've, I've coached some of the elite players. I mean, so I look what some guys that have played for me have done this year, Big Ten Players of the Year, Big Ten Player of the Year last year, um, a lot of players of the year in, the, in this league, goalie of the year in this league. So I'm familiar with the player pool. I've also coached a, a bunch of international teams of guys that are kind of now at that Division One college hockey age. So um, I certainly think I could draw on that, not just from the player side and evaluation side, but a lot of from knowing what the modern day athlete needs to be successful. You know, I've seen it. I've seen the mental makeup of, of the guys that have made it. I've seen maybe the obstacles of the guys that have it. And I think the modern day athletes just different. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing in a lot of ways. I think a lot of people are resistant to that. And ultimately your job as a leader, I think is to maximize the potential there's certain guys that maybe they're just maybe their highest end 
is having a really great collegiate career and then moving on to a job. Maybe some guy's highest end is 20 years in the NHL. To me, our, our job is to maximize that, right? Pull as much out of a guy as, as possible. And I think when you do that, you could look yourself in the mirror. And I think when you do that, a player could look themselves in the mirror. So as much to me about recruiting guys and knowing the player pool is, is developing them and making sure that they succeed once they get here. Everybody good? All right. Appreciate it, coach. Thank you.